Hey guys, what's going on? Also, Merry Blade Christmas and Happy New Year! So if you guys recall a few weeks back, I posted a video saying that I would be doing a Q&A, my first Q&A in three years. I can't believe it's been that long. But I have had loads more subscribers come to my channel and I assume you guys want to know more about me. So hey, that's what this video is for. First of all, before I go on, I just want to say thank you to everyone who sent me in questions. I didn't think I'd be getting this much, but I underestimated you guys. I mean, I got a shit ton. Now I know it's in the video video three questions per person I won't be able to get to every single question because I totally forgot that three questions per person with the amount of subscribers I have means a lot of damn questions so instead of three questions per person what I did is that I took the questions that were the most unique and the most interesting and what I also did is that I took the question or questions that were the most asked or the most repeated within Facebook YouTube or even Twitter so with that being said guys let's jump into our end of the year Q&A any films you regret not seeing in theaters? You know, luckily I have been able to see every film I want to see in theaters, but there's always one film that sticks out and to this day I regret not seeing it, and that is 2013's Rush. I could have seen it, I had a screening for it, this was before I became press, so I would have had to wait two hours in line for it, but I didn't mind because waiting, because honestly waiting in line with a bunch of movie fans was a lot of fun, but anyways, I could have seen it. But it was one of those days where I decided, you know what, I'm going to take a little bit back for myself. I'm going to hang out with one of my best friends. And honestly, to this day, I regret not going to that screening. Not, not, I mean, nothing against my friend because I had a great time with my friend that night. But, but, that film was amazing. Rush was incredible. And it's one of those films that if I had seen it, I would have easily put that in my top 10 films of 2013. That was an amazing film. So if I had to choose one film I regret not seeing in theaters, Easily rushed because, my God, that film blew me away. How would you rank all 2017 superhero films from worst to best? How would I rank the superhero films of this year from best to worst? Number one's Logan. Two is Wonder Woman. Three is Thor. Four is Spider-Man Homecoming. Five, see, this is where it gets tricky uh, because everything below Spider-Man are either films that I liked or I just thought were very disappointing. So... I'm gonna have to go with just not Justice League. I'm gonna have to go with Kingsman, The Golden Circle, even though I liked it, it was, it was disappointing for me. I'm gonna have to go with Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, and I'll have to go with Justice League. Justice League easily for me is the weakest superhero film of the year. Even though I had a fun ride with it, that film has a lot of flaws. And I mean a lot of flaws. But yeah, if I were to rank my 2017 superhero films from best to worst. That'd be the rank I would do it in. Logan, nothing tops Logan. I mean, absolutely nothing tops Logan for me. What is your most anticipated movie of 2018? Funny thing about that, so I'm actually going to talk to the guys about doing our top five most anticipated movies of 2018 soon. So I can't really tell you guys my most anticipated movies, but I can tell you guys I have films I'm looking forward to for sure. Like I'm looking forward to, of course, The Incredibles 2. I'm looking forward to Black Panther, The Nun. Uh, there's a lot. Oh, um, what, what else am I missing here? Winchester. Uh, oh, Pacific Rim Uprising. I think that's going to be a badass movie. What else am I looking forward to? Um, I'm actually looking forward to The New Mutants a lot. And I guess if I had to say one more. Oh, I almost forgot about this. Wreck-It Ralph Breaks the Internet. I think that's what it is. Wreck-It Ralph 2. Those are the films I'm looking forward to besides my top five. But if you guys are wondering when that top five will be out, I'm hoping to get it up by mid-January. So stay tuned, guys. What is your most overrated movie of 2017? Oh, boy. I know I'm going to get a lot of backlash on this because I know this film was universally loved by critics and people who I know. But personally, I liked the film. But upon rewatch, it bored the hell out of me, and that's a ghost story. Before you say you just didn't get it, here is the thing, all right? I am a huge defender of A24 films, minus this and Spring Breakers. I can't stand Spring Breakers. That's actually the worst A24 film I've ever seen. I'm the biggest defender of A24 films. I love The Witch, love The Disastrous, love It Comes at Night. I love Locke, Ex Machina. And given that this was an A24 film, I was expecting greatness out of it. And what I got was just fine. I mean, when people say that a lot of A24 films are about nothing, this film is the pure definition where it's about nothing. It's literally a ghost walking around and watching time pass. And I get there's underlying themes and the metaphorical storytelling. I totally get it. 
but the thing is, it bored the shit out of me. So if I had to choose my most overrated film of the year, it's easily a ghost story. It was a film that I liked at first, but then upon rewatch, it didn't hold up for me whatsoever. In fact, I wanted to turn it off. I was actually texting friends going like, I want to turn this movie off now. What is one technology that you hope they make in your lifetime? That's a good question right there. What's one technology? All right, there's one thing I've always wanted ever since I saw Back to the Future 2. I want those damn hoverboards, okay? I used to be a huge skater back in the day. I used to have a skateboard. I still have my skateboard somewhere around here. Yes, guys, I did actually skateboard back in the day. I used to rollerblade all the time. I want that damn hoverboard. Give me that hoverboard, please. I would actually be more active outside if they actually uh, made hoverboards. I mean, I know they technically exist, but they're not really hoverboards, but they do technically exist in a way. But still, give me hoverboards. I would actually be outside way more often. You guys know how much I'm inside these days. I mean, it's insane how much I'm inside these days. Thoughts on Rick and Morty? You know, I'm actually late to the Rick and Morty train. I don't watch much TV besides Game of Thrones and Curb Your Enthusiasm, two of my favorite shows out right now. But I never really followed it. I never even heard of it. I mean, I heard the name Rick and Morty multiple times. I had seen artwork. I had seen shots from certain episodes. But the reason why it kept popping up was because Cliff Lozinski, one of my favorite developers, kept bringing it up on Twitter because I follow him on Twitter. And then I asked my buddy Shane about it who said, dude, you should check it out. It's like funny as hell. So at first I watched the best of that series and I was just like, this is really weird. Like, I don't know if I can hand, I don't know if I can get into this. Then I decided, you know, I'm going to watch episode from game to end. And before I knew it, I was hooked like that. Seriously. I haven't laughed this hard at a show since the Curb Your Enthusiasm. I mean, if you guys, so thoughts on Rick and Morty, I think it's hilarious. It's such a creative and unique cartoon series, well, adult anime cartoon series. And while the humor is so out there, Justin Rowland is able to, and Mike, Mike Carmen, I think the creator's names are, they're able to create that perfect balance. Even though it's so out there, they're able to find that balance with that so out there humor that it doesn't really get lost out there in the crowd. I still need to finish season three, so don't spoil it for me because I haven't seen the final episodes of season three. But if, I, if you guys want to know what my favorite episode is, it's in season two, I think it's season two episode, it's either episodes one, two, or three, because it's where uh, Rick and Morty and Summer, they're in that fight, that interdimensional fight, and they have to be in sync together. That scene, that episode had me crying with laughter. I had never laughed so hard at, at a TV show in ages. So I, Rick and Morty, think it's badass. Mary, fuck, kill. Anya Taylor-Joy, Amy Adams, Daisy Ridley. Damn you. Damn you, because those are a couple of my celebrity crushes right there. God. Mary, Anya Taylor-Joy, easily, because she is my number one celebrity crush. I love that woman to death. Um... Fuck, I would say Amy Adams, because you guys know me personally, I love redheads. Like, redheads are my weakness. I'm not making, I freaking love redheads. Uh, kill Daisy Ridley, I'm sorry. I love Daisy Ridley, though. She's one of the most adorable people. Like, when I watch a video with Daisy Ridley in it, she seems like one of the most down-to-earth and sweetest people and adorable people ever. So... Uh, God, even though I don't want to kill her, I have to because I can't kill Amy Adams and I cannot kill Anya Terror Joy. So, yeah. Oh, damn you! Any advice for young filmmakers? The strange thing is, I haven't directed a short film at all since last year and I miss it. I want to direct another film or a short film, just badly right now. Like, I'm itching to do it. But if I were to give anyone out there advice, I would give you guys the same advice that James Wan gave me before I, I finished. Um, Humans Can Like 2, which I still consider one of my best works today, even though that thing is grainy as hell, especially in the end. I asked James Wan that same question, and he said, and he said this, I'm going to give you guys the same advice. He said, trust your vision and have fun with it. And also, I'll give you guys some more advice from a guy who is a YouTube director. He said, don't be up and coming, just be a filmmaker. Just get out there and film your stuff. Just film, 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 no matter what, if it's shitty or if it's even great, just get out there and film. Just explore your craft and develop it even further. What's your favorite movie review that you've made? Oh God, that's a good question. You know, I've loved every review I've done. I'm proud of everything I've done on my channel. 
But there are two reviews that stick out in my head. My first one is my review of Inside Out because simply I had a blast filming that intro. You guys have no idea. Directing Vin and Joe to what they did had me my had me and Shane dying with laughter. But my favorite review that I've ever done easily is easily my review of Looper. To this day, that intro, I still cannot believe how good that came out. Despite the fact that I only had a Kodak Easy Share. I didn't have this camera at the time. I didn't have these lights. Didn't have that microphone. I was only with my with my um, Kodak, and I'm still proud of how that video came out to this day. So if I had to choose my favorite review, um, Looper. I gotta make another video with Shane again, seriously. Oh, and also, despite the intro being, I believe, like 50 seconds to a man and a half long, that entire intro took Shane and I, I believe, an hour and a half to two hours to film. But it was worth it because god dang it came out so good. What is the thing about Silent Hill 2 that scared slash disturbed you the most? Now before I go on, for those of you who don't know, I love Silent Hill 2. That's the game that has scared me the shitless. That didn't make sense. Silent Hill 2 is the game that has scared me the very most in life. No other game has given me nightmares besides a few other games out there. But the thing that scares me the most about that game is the psychological connection that the enemies have to James. Like, for example, I don't know if you guys knew this, but like, for example, the nurses to James, th th this is messed up as all hell. The nurses are actually psychological to James because the nurses represent James' sexual frustrations. And for some reason, that creeps me out so much. And not to mention, just it's just the vibe of Silent Hill that freaks me out. Just There's just something about going into this town Knowing that each creature that you face is a reflection of James' psyche in a way, that's what's scary to me. If you guys haven't played Silent Hill 2, play it, trust me. Especially if you're a horror fan, you will not be disappointed. Like, it's an amazing story, that game is. What is the best performance that was snubbed by the Oscars? Best performance that was snubbed by the Oscars. There's always one that comes to the head, and I still cannot believe to this that he was not nominated. Jake Gyllenhaal and Nightcrawler. That film, especially his performance, was just unlike anything I'd ever seen from an actor. Jake Gyllenhaal, I didn't even see Jake Gyllenhaal in that movie. I saw someone that didn't have a soul in that film. When you look into that character's eyes, I saw someone that was a complete sociopath and someone that just wanted to just do whatever he could to get the job done. And seeing what Jake Gyllenhaal did in that film blew me away. He should have won Best Actor without a doubt. Favorite Spielberg movie? My favorite Spielberg movie to this day is Jaws. Yes, more than Raiders, more than E.T., more than any other Spielberg film out there, my favorite Spielberg film was Jaws. It's one of those films that still makes me not be able to sleep after seeing it. What did 2017 teach you about the state of cinema? That, my friend, is a really good question. What did 2017 teach me about the state of cinema? If anything, it taught me this, that indie films are making a huge resurgence. Indie films, I feel like, were not given this much of a time in the spotlight as they were back in the day, because easily back in the day, it was blockbusters that got the spotlight bigger, but now that indie films, like especially studios like A24, are really prominent out there. A24, I feel like, is making the indie film genre, not really the genre, but the indie film itself, come back up. Favorite Star Wars game? My favorite Star Wars game is Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic. To this day, that's not only my favorite Star Wars game, but it's one of my favorite games of all time. It's also my favorite RPG of all time. Not because, not just because of its Star Wars. I'm not being biased, trust me. Star Wars Knights of the Republic has one of the best stories I've ever heard in the Star Wars universe. But if you guys haven't played it, spoilers, the fact that you're playing as the former Sith Lord, I never saw that coming. And plus, um, the combat system, the kidders, the dialogue, and plus it was made by Bioware, the guys who made Mass Effect. I've put in so many hours to Star Wars Knights of the Republic. I think I've put in over 50 hours to it. But yeah, Star Wars, Kotar as I'm going to call it, is the best Star Wars game I've ever played. And nothing has come close to topping it. Actually, no, Battlefront 2 has come close. But Star Wars, the fact that I've put so many hours into it... And the thing is, people who know me is that I'm not the biggest fan of, of RPGs, but I love that game to death. So, yeah, Kotar is my favorite Star Wars game, without a doubt. Did you have a phase in high school? Oh, God. Um, I feel that this question come up sooner or later. You know, believe it or not, I don't really think I had a phase. I mean, if antisocial counts as a phase, I guess that would be it. Um, in 9th and 10th grade, I was a very antisocial person. I would hardly talk to anybody. Phases? Yeah, antisocial, I guess. I... 
didn't have that emo phase. I didn't have that phase where I went out and drank a lot. I don't even drink to this day. I'm not even. I don't drink alcohol at all, actually. Um, but yeah, I guess in terms of phase, anti-social, if that counts. Otherwise, no. I was a pretty damn boring person in high school. Literally, all day in high school, I'm not even kidding you guys. I'll stay home, play video games, watch movies, and maybe go out to the beach here and there. That's all I did. When my homecoming and my senior prom dances came up, I didn't go to a single dance at all in my school days because you want know, to know what I did instead? On my prom night especially, I went to a buddy of mine's place and we played Gears of War 3 on co-op all night. And to this day, I do not regret my decision. If you could choose a movie to be re-released in theaters, which would it be? Oh man, that's a good one because there are tons of films I would love to see re-released. One that always sticks out in my head is Gladiator. I mean, seriously, imagine seeing the Coliseum scenes in Gladiator on that IMAX screen. Imagine hearing the sounds of the uh, spectators in IMAX. That would be the most amazing experience. But if I had to choose other than Gladiator, I would say Empire Strikes Back. And I guess I would say um, Monty Python and the Holy Grail. Oh, The Exorcist as well. I would kill to see The Exorcist in theaters. That would be an amazing experience. Do you think Netflix is worth the price of admission? You know, the strange thing is I don't use Netflix a lot. My dad owns Netflix and I use his Netflix. But honest to God, yeah, I really do think so. With the amount of content that they give every month, not just TV shows and movies, but original content, you're really getting your bang for your buck. Because Netflix, despite that I don't watch it a lot, I need to watch The Punisher because I keep putting it off. Even though I just watched Bright, it was okay. But yeah, for the amount of content that Netflix gives out, honest to God, it's worth it. It's like, what, 11 bucks a month, or I think it's 12 now, 14 if you go for the 4K content, I think. I need to use Netflix again, seriously, and I need to watch The Punisher. I'm sorry I haven't gotten a review of that, uh, or Stranger Things, because I did watch Stranger Things, and I love season two. Quick review, guys. I love season two of Stranger Things. Episode seven, or was it eight, was the weakest of out of all the episodes, but love the nonetheless. I think season two and one are on par with each other. If you can make a film with the budget you wanted, which would it be? All right, now hear me out guys, hear me out on this one, all right? There's one film I would kill to make in the future, and that would be a Devil May Cry based film. Now, I don't know if you guys know about Devil May Cry, but that's one of my favorite games of all time. The fact that video games have had such a bad track record, I would love to do not a live action film because there's no way I'd be able to find a Dante like that in real life, seriously. So what I would do, unless if it was a cosplayer, but still, what I would do is that i make a CG and I made Double May Cry film, and I would adapt Double May Cry 3. That's how I would do it. But the thing is, that game was so long that I have to make it into a series because there's no way I could jam pack so much story and gameplay into an hour and a half to two hour, unless if I made a three hour film, which I make a three hour film. I know people wouldn't sit down for a three hour film, but I totally would. But if I were to make the film with any budget I could, Devil May Cry without a doubt. There needs to be a good video game movie and Devil May Cry has the potential for an amazing film with the lore and story in that film. What kind of music do you listen to the most? In terms of music, I'm a huge rock fan. Rock fan to the day I die. I mean, my favorite band of all time, Metallica. I love these guys to death. Thank you to my brother Alex for giving me this for my birthday. I love this shirt. Love some pop here and there. A little bit of rap, but only from NWA, Dr. Dre, Ice Cube, and Notorious B.I.G. Love those guys. I love Lindsey Sterling. Love her. I saw her live in 2014. To this day, I think that's the best concert I've ever attended. But yeah, in terms of music I listen to the most, rock. Easily. Rock to the day I die. What are your favorite Disney movies? Uh, my favorite Disney movies, well, if you guys want my, my definition, my actual favorite Disney movie, it's Hercules that I doubt. I love Hercules. I have watched that film so many times and I can never get enough of it. And to this day, I say that Hades is the greatest Disney villain of all time. But if I were to say other Disney movies I love, uh, Hunchback of the Notre Dame, love that film so much. Love Mulan, um, Being the Beast, oh my god. Even the new one I love to death. Emperor's New Groove, I love Emperor's New Groove. Oh my god. I watched that film back in high school. I need to watch that film again, but yeah, Emperor's New Groove is damn great. Um, but yeah, in terms of my favorite Disney movies, I know I'm forgetting a lot of them, but those are the ones that come to mind. Um, I love those films to death, but, my, but, my, but my favorite one, Hercules, easily. If you can see the world in one aspect ratio for the rest of your life, which would you choose? That would be the IMAX format. I love IMAX movies, well, depending on the film, because some films can hugely benefit from it, like Gravity, Star Wars, 
um, any Marvel movie, honestly, any space opera, but there are some movies that can do bad with it, like that shit stain right there. If I could see every film in IMAX, I would. I really would, because that's my favorite format ever. So if I were to choose uh, one specific format, IMAX, easily. Do you like hot chocolate? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I apologize for that impression. <laughs> but yeah, seriously, love hot chocolate. Love that stuff. Who's your favorite pop music artist? There's a couple that come into my head. I love Lady Gaga. Love La... Okay, love La... LaDonna? Was I... I was about to say LaDonna. I uh, know, but um, I love LaDonna. Love Lady Gaga. And I loved Aaliyah back in the day. She was amazing. She died way too young. Rest in peace to her to this day. Um, but in terms of best pop music artists, easily... Madonna and Lady Gaga. I love those two to death. I listen to Madonna and Lady Gaga so much. It's insane. Are you a Middle Earth fan? I will answer that question with another question. Is water wet? What video games do you mostly play? Guy, in terms of video games I mostly play, there's a lot I play. In terms of, if you guys are wondering the genres of video games, I love almost, I pretty much love anything minus a couple. I, I hate puzzle games, depending on where you're talking from when it comes to that. I hate sports games, like sports games, I think should just go away because I feel like that sports games are just updates of what they were from the previous year, especially Madden. I don't know how those games are still selling, but that's just me. I love action adventure games, love survival horror games. I stream survival horror games all the time on my Twitch channel. If you guys are wondering the games I'm currently playing right now, I'm playing Bloodborne to this day still, I love that game. I'm playing Cuphead actually, that game is a blast. I play Dead by Daylight, um, Borderlands. Right now, I'm actually playing the Monster Hunter World Beta, which is so much fun. Even though I was never the biggest Monster Hunter fan until now, because that game is such a blast to play. Um, so yeah, what kind of video games I play? I almost play everything out there, just minus sports and uh, puzzle games, and also trivia games, depending on what it is. Best action scene of the year? To this day, my favorite action scene of the year is the Tequila Warehouse shootout scene from Baby Driver. Nothing has come close to topping that scene. Nothing from Star Wars, nothing from even Blade Runner, nothing from Wonder Woman or Logan. That scene in Baby Driver was so damn creative and unique that every time I watched that scene, I'd still get chills. I feel like that no other person but Edgar Wright could have directed that scene the way that that scene played out. What movie made you laugh so hard this year? What movie made me laugh the hardest this year? All right, there's two that come to head on this one. I love Three Billboards Outside Ebbing, Missouri. I love that film, and I also love The Disaster Artist. Those two are my favorite comedies of the year. Um, but in terms of the one that made me cry laughing, I'd probably say Three Billboards. I love that film. I love Ryan McDonough. No one writes dark comedy like Ryan McDonough does. But if I were to choose the one I laugh the hardest at, it's easily Three Billboards that I dealt. Why do you think we're living in an age where great legendary directors used to be great but now, they've recently been making too many fine or bad movies. That's a really good question, actually. Now, here's the thing. When it comes to directors and movies, I honestly don't blame those bad movies on the directors. I really don't. Um, because directors are given a script to work with that most of the time, unless if that same director is also the writer, is not written by them. And I know an example that people bring up is Alien Covenant, but here's the thing. I actually like the Alien Covenant. I know a lot of people hated it, but it was definitely a by-the-numbers alien film, but I had a blast with it. I really did. In terms of why great directors keep making crap films, it's not their fault, honestly. If anything, I blame the script, because the script is one of the most important things about a, a movie, and I believe Akira Kurosawa said this best. If you have a very terrible script, I think that... I'm sure I'm paraphrasing this, but he said that... Even with a terrible script, an amazing director can make a terrible script a mediocre movie. I blame Unforgettable on that god-awful writer. I mean, holy shit, that was awful writing. Also, execution has a huge factor to do with it. It's writing and the execution. When are you coming to Pennsylvania? How many boyfriends slash girlfriends have you had? I have had zero girlfriends. No joke. I have been solo all my life. I mean, I've been on dates with girls before, and there was a girl that, there was an amazing girl that I had dated for about three months. We never really moved into that relationship phase, but there came a night in which I could have made a move, and I choked, and to this day, I still kick myself to about this day. She was an amazing girl. I will not give out her name, but she was amazing. 
love her to death to this day still and I need to hang out with her again I gotta text her actually but yeah I haven't had a single girlfriend to this day what are your thoughts on Disney's recent purchase of 20th Century Fox the buyout of 20th Century Fox from Disney so I have a lot of thoughts on this so I'm gonna try and condense it down into a very short version of it the possibilities for this buyout are endless I mean Fantastic Four could possibly be getting finally an amazing film under the MCU the X-Men could be coming back to the MCU, but there's one thing that does concern me, and that's the keeping of the tone of Deadpool and the New Mutants. Even though I think that Bob Iger said that Deadpool would stay R-rated, thank God. But with other films, because since 20th Century Fox has been taking more risks, the biggest concern I have for this bout is, what if Disney does not allow them to take any more risks? Because if a film calls for it, it should be R-rated. And I told my friends and my bosses multiple times that I would rather have no Deadpool than a toned-down Deadpool. While there are a lot of possibilities that are endless that could bring a lot of positives, there are plenty of negatives to talk about. And do I think it should happen? Part of me says no, but part of me says yes. So I'm half and half on this. Um, it could be cool, could be bad. We'll have to see how it plays out in the end. Hi, Austin. Just wondering, where did you get that cool jacket? He's referring to my leather jacket that I wear. And also, thank you, man. I appreciate they like my jacket. That was a jacket I got for Christmas back in 2015. I live in Florida, so it's really cold here. And when it does get cold, that's like an amazing blessing to wear that jacket. You know what? You know, hold on. I'm gonna. I'm actually going to grab it. Give me just a minute. Yeah, my mom got me this jacket. Thank you, Mom. Um, I don't really wear this jacket outside unless if it's really cold outside, which is a rarity here in Florida. I wear it for my reviews because I thought, you know what, maybe a change of attire and you guys seem to dig it. So thank you guys for liking this. I like this jacket too. It's actually really comfy except when it gets really hot. Do you have pets? No, I don't have pets. I wish I had pets. I would kill for a dog. I'd kill for a golden retriever. A husky, a corgi, even a pug I'd love to have, or a Lhasa Apso, because um, my friend has Lhasa Apsos, and they're such adorable dogs. If I had to choose but the dog I want right now, it'd be a golden retriever named Rocket. Return of the Jedi or Last Jedi? I love Return of the Jedi, but Last Jedi, easily. I know a lot of people have flaws with The Last Jedi, but those flaws weren't really flaws because I enjoyed or was entertained by that movie nonetheless, even though there were some things I liked the least about that film, like the the casino scene, which I can I can agree is probably the least good thing about it, but I was still entertained by it, and that's all I could ask for in a Star Wars film. But yeah, Last Jedi, sorry, Return of the Jedi, I love you, but Last Jedi takes it for me. Are you a gamer? If so, PS4 or Xbox One? Yes, I am a gamer. I have a PS4. I stream on Twitch, on YouTube from time to time. Uh, I actually refuse to buy an Xbox One. There's really nothing about the Xbox One that makes me want to get it. I feel like that PS4 is a better exclusives, personally. That's just me, and it has better games. Again, that's just me. Cannot wait for Red Dead 2. Cannot wait for Detroit to become human. Dude, the PS4 is gonna have some killer exclusives, but um, I am a gamer. I have a PS4. I have a laptop gaming PC, which I got, or one from Game Ranks. Thank you guys again from Game Ranks for that. But yeah, PS4 all the way. What made you want to be a reviewer on YouTube? What made me want to be a reviewer on YouTube? This kind of goes back to my high school days, because back in high school, like I said previously, I was huge into movies, still am to this day, um, and I was afraid that if I talked about movies constantly with my peers that I'd be made fun of, of being a movie nerd, and I just wanted a platform to talk about movies on, and I had always, and I had a YouTube channel which I had uploaded videos of me, of me doing gameplay videos like Guitar Hero, Fallout, and I think I did one on uh, Dance Central. Oh my god, those Dance Central videos. The reason why I started YouTube in the first place was because I just wanted a platform and I was with my anxiety, which I do have actually, um, I was worried that I was gonna be told, kill myself, get off YouTube, you're worthless, you're nothing, but those are trolls and I've learned to block those guys out. And one day, I just saw a view Jeremy Johns did for My Soul to Take, and I said if, I, if he can do it, so can I. I did it and now we're here. But no, I'm happy I'm here and I'm happy you guys are entertained by my videos and I'm happy I have somewhere other than my friends and my family to talk movies about. And also being on YouTube helped me a lot with my confidence, it really did. All right guys, and that'll do it for the Q&A. First of all, I just wanna say again, thank you so much to everyone who is sending questions. I also do wanna apologize if I did not get to your questions. There were a lot and I didn't want this video to be too long. 
But now that we're done with the Q&A, I do have an announcement to make. I know you guys are wondering about the Putnam Cruise extravaganza for the top 10 best and worst films of 2017. In the past, normally what I've done is that I would do two videos a day for five days, going from January 1st to 5th. So I would have to edit 10 videos within three days. But this time I decided to extend that time because editing 10 videos together in three days is mentally exhausting. I do all the videos for the guys. So what I'm doing this time is that instead of two videos a day for five days, I'm doing one video a day for 10 days. So um, it'll still be the same order, Shane, Joe, Lucas, Alex, and myself. Only difference is that it will be one video a day from January 1st till the 10th now. And I'm actually gonna have a set upload date for about for like 3 p.m. in the afternoon. So if you guys are wondering about the extravaganza still happening, it's just, I'm just giving myself more time and more days because two videos a day, five days and all the editing within three days is mentally exhausting. But yeah guys, thank you so much for tuning in to this Q&A. I really appreciate it. Again, thank you for your questions and if I didn't get to yours, I'm very sorry. And I hope you guys are looking forward to the extravaganza, the best and worst from the Putnam crew even more now. Cannot wait to film those videos in a couple of days. That's going to be a blast. If you guys want to follow me on social media, I'm on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Twitch, and I'm also on Snapchat. So if you guys want to follow me on all those social media platforms, all the links and my usernames for each platform are in the description below. And if you guys enjoyed this Q&A, if you guys want to see a future Q&A, please hit that like button, share, and subscribe to see more videos just like this one. And of course, until my next review or until the best works extravaganza of 2017 from the crew, I will see you guys next time. Happy holidays, my friends.